Greetings Mary Me folks, Simeon here. I wanted to do a video about something I call tickling the foot of the dragon. Now uh, uh, basically what it is this video is going to be on is a little bit on crystals and uh, how we perceive them, how they can be used. Now the metaphor of tickling the foot of the dragon, we are the dragon and uh, how we're tickled is by working with crystals. Now, crystals have an energy put, uh, output. It's a stream. Sometimes it's a pulse, sometimes it's a wave. But, uh, irregardless, it's a generator of sorts. It resonates. Now, it also reacts to energies around us, or around it. Example, uh, my energies mixing with the energies of this crystal, which is an amethyst, uh, generator uh, produce a third frequency set if you will which is what uh, uh, works with uh, building energy for a circle or uh, directing energy towards a target uh, when you're making a blessing or a curse uh, plus the energy you raise is also uh, all part of the, the process but tickling the foot of the dragon is the crystal energy interacting with our own. Alright? Don't mean to cover up my mouth. There we go. Uh, basically all, all, all it is is tickling the foot of the dragon. This crystal is sending my hand chakras waves and pulses of energy. The, the waves and pulses are what the crystal is naturally designed for because of its uh, uh, earth base and because its crystalline structure it resonates but I can feel it on the underside of my palm and it for me I perceive it as sort of a tingle sort of a, 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 a colder wind happening between the crystal and my hand but that's that's what I call tickling the foot of the dragon. Now it can happen with any type of a crystal. Uh, for, for this wand here, this is a, um, a lapis wand. And I can do this all same thing. Now for me that perception is a little bit different. A little bit more powerful. I can feel it on the pads of my fingers right here. The skirt of the crystal energy brushing against the sensitive uh, receptors in my hand, which is very cool. Now, even with my uh, sphere, it's the self same thing. Being that it's a sphere, though, its energies are smoother, less rough, rough edged, so it will take me more sensitivity to pick up on the energy of the sphere even though the sphere is bigger well not much bigger but it's bigger than a crystal point but I can put my hand a little bit closer and for a sphere what I perceive is more of a, a cloud or a very soft edged barrier of energy. Uh, not so much going into my hand, but between the sphere and my hand, like a cushion. I suppose it's that way because I haven't directed the energy of the sphere to go anywhere. It's just like uh, the Van Allen's radiation bait around, uh, belt around the earth. It's there and radiating. <laughs> All right. Now let's try it with the skull. I have a quartz crystal skull here, which a very kind friend got for me. I hear it is rather rare to get a skull that has really positive, good vibrations on it. Now, 
I wipe my hand over it and some of the more sharper projections of the skull, the eye sockets, the nose, even the teeth, I get harsher energy from there than I do from the back of the skull, which is very smooth. So the little contours of this crystal skull uh, are the outlet point for the energies. So because it's face forward, the energies will be going out that way, towards you guys. If I face it to me, the energies will going, be going towards me. So it's a directional crystal. Very similar to what a single terminated crystal would be. Okay? Point on one end, flat on the other. Point on one end, flat on the other. Well, smooth. Anyway. Uh, tickling the foot of the dragon. It's a relationship and a lot of fun that you have with crystals. And it needs to be. Crystals aren't just boring pieces of things that you see on your altar. They are meant to be handled, touched, played with. These stones and uh, crystals that you have in your altar they're part of your family. Just as if uh, uh, you had a human brother or sister or cousin or uncle or aunt or mother or father for that matter. These crystals are family. Now, when you pick them out, you pick them out so that they resonate with you. They may just feel good in your hand or you may get what I was perceived when I was picking them out. I go for the for a sphere. I go for the sphere that has the strongest cloud between the sphere and my hand. The most solid cloud I have. Now, there's a few things that I do when I'm picking up crystals. I will pick up a crystal and put it down and then pick it up again. Now what I'm sort of testing for, I want to see whether it holds the cold or whether it holds the heat of my hand. Now if I hold it for a long enough time and then put it down and then p pick it back up again and hold it, I'm probably going to perceive a little bit residue of my hand on it. So it has a little bit of ability to retain heat which also translates out to retaining energy so now <coughs> forgive me a crystal is only as good as what you the abilities that you you discover on it now I, I examined the the structure of it, the color, how dense it feels, how solid it feels, sometimes the physical weight. Uh, with a sphere it's a little bit difficult, but most spheres are dense and very heavy. This one weighs about, oh, I would say maybe an eighth of a pound. Now, in crystals where you can actually see things inside, one of the things I look for is an awful lot of occlusions. Uh, uh, little twists and turns in the faucets of the crystal. Uh, I also look for striations, cracked areas that penetrate either all the way through or partially all the way through in a crystal. But I also look for something called ghost images. Now these are, how do I put it? These are tiny little uh, uh, 360 degree fractures inside the crystal what I call ghosts. Now depending on the light when you turn it up towards the light these particular ghosts will highlight and they'll shine back at you and tell. Not all of the crystals have ghosts but if you're lucky when you're picking them out and you happen to turn it the right way you will see uh, uh, ghost objects or ghost remnants uh, even more rare 
is ones that are shaped in the outline of something you know like uh, on the skull, the crystal skull if I look at the back of the skull in a proper light I see the little tiny outline of a house now uh, uh, it's no bigger than uh, uh, let's say the plastic house piece that you find on the Monopoly board no bigger than that and there's no detail it's just a fracture that outlines the shape of a house or it could outline the shape of an animal or an object of some sort that's what I classify as a ghost in crystals uh, uh, discovering this type of thing is fun when, when you're uh, looking for your crystals or when you're trying to pick them out but uh, uh, the interaction between the energy that the crystal uh, puts out as a uh, uh, object that resonates energy and patterns compared and in reference to your own personal energies and patterns uh, uh, that's what I refer to as tickling the foot of the bag okay we will see you next time merry meet and merry part and merry meet again blessed be